Hey guys, Thomas here, and today we have a quick summary video for you on the JS1. So the JS1 is our first production frame, and I've been running it for the last four months. So this is sort of covering the features of it. We've got a build video separate to this if you want to see the exact build specs. But for this, we're going to be covering sort of what the frame's all about, and then also what my specific setup I've been running on it is. I've been using the frame for the last four months exclusively for racing, and I've been really, really happy with it. Um, obviously, it's my own design, so I'm a little bit biased, but uh, we'll run you through all the functionality of it now and its sort of uh, purpose. Okay, so here we have my quad and dad's quad. They're pretty much the same configuration with just a few subtle differences, but we'll go through that in more detail soon. Um, so the first base customizable thing is the pod colors. So there's a choice right now of red and clear. We'll probably make more options available later, but for now we're just doing red and clear for the initial batch. Um, red, I just think it looks awesome, right? So that's why I'm running red. But the clear is actually really practical for LEDs. So for Ningbo China, where we had to run an LED uh, that's visible from three sides, I had an LED in my pod. And that's how I got around that and then made the whole thing light up, especially at night, it looks really, really incredible. So one of the parts we've got is the SMA module here. So that's what's shipping stock with the frame and that basically allows you to mount an SMA antenna rear side. Uh, this just unscrews really nice and easy. So this frame was built a lot around the multi-GP specifications. So one thing for multi-GP, you have to run left hand and right hand antennas. So this is the quickest way right now that you can swap antennas and still have a solid connection. Um, especially in impacts and stuff, this will hold up really, really well. So just a really nice, easy solution for antenna swaps. Right now I've got my crossfire mounted out back and we've also got uh, two secondary module bays. On dad's quad I'm actually using a pit switch in one of these and in my other quad I'm using an LED controller. What we'll do now is pop off the pod and actually have a look inside so you can see the layout and sort of how things are structured under the pod. Uh, to remove the pod it's pretty straightforward. You basically just pop the front tabs off, then you want to pop the rear tabs off and then you just lift straight off, nice and easy. And now you've got full access to the gear inside. Under the pod, the first thing you'll notice is we've got a roll cage, a uh, carbon fiber. This basically protects you from most of your major impacts, right? So anything that's sort of head on. Uh, this is designed to protect your internal electronics like your video transmitter, receiver, ESC flight controller. The pod uh, is sort of an aero element, but then it also doubles as protecting from mid airs, so it's keeping all your wires inside. That way, if you get a prop strike, it's just gonna bounce off the plastic and deflect. It's not gonna actually uh, cut any wires. As far as gear goes, I'm rocking the Foxia F722 dual flight controller. I'm right now using the MP6000 gyro on it, but it is a dual gyro, so with the beta flight devs, we will be doing lots of testing with both, just to sort of, um, you know, see what kind of performance we can unlock. But right now with the MP6000, we've been having a really, really incredible run. Um, for ESC, we've got the F55 amp. Uh, this one's got the V1 in it, but I will probably be swapping to the V2 once these uh, die or eventually are crashed. Right now they've been holding up incredibly well though, so, you know, maybe they won't die and I'll just have to upgrade one day. But uh, so far, it's been holding up really well. Uh, it can handle the BMS motors, no dramas at all, even in 30 degree plus weather. So that's been really, really good. On the note of motors, I am running the BMS motors. I've been running the gold lines for the last couple races. Um, the 6S has just been really, really versatile, and especially for multi-GP, we need to go the extra distance. I'm prioritizing my endurance time over actual raw top speed. Um, Dad's running the, gold, uh, the red lines on his quads, and I swap between them, just depending on what races come up and what spec I need to adhere to. As far as props go, I've been using the 5146 from HQ on this quad. Uh, a lot of other people have been specking the 5141s also and they've been working really well, but the 5146 is my personal favourite. Uh, just the way it handles on track and so the lap times it pulls off for the distance you go, they work really really well with the BMS motors. Um, these props were based off of the 5145 V3 that I was using beforehand, so these are just sort of a more efficient, more powerful option of that. Um, hence, I've been really really happy with these and these feel just like home for me, uh, especially with the 2000 KB. On the note of props though, we will be working on some new props shortly, so we have some cool stuff in the works with that, uh, but we'll release more details closer to when we actually have more information about that. Um, that's been a fun journey too, we'll talk about soon. Backside, we have a bracket up here for your, well primarily for your RX and VTX, that's what they're intended for, and there's two wiring channels there too to write your wires from the roll cage down to the flight controller. Right now I'm using the Unify Pro 32 Nano, for the video transmitter, the main reason I'm using that one is because you have the ability to go up to 400 milliwatts. So if I want to do long range, or if there's maybe a certain specification of race where I need 200 milliwatts per, uh, for some reason, 
I can do that. For general racing though, the Unify Pro Nano is perfectly fine. That only goes up to 50 milliwatts, but most races are 25 milliwatts anyways. So if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. Dad actually runs those all the time. As far as LEDs go, this is designed to take up to 40 LEDs to meet with 90% of race specifications out there. Right now for the multi-GP Ningbo race, you only needed LEDs to cover three different perspectives of the quad. So I've just got one backside to light up the entire pod and then one on the front arm. You can really configure these how you like. There's a lot of little neat places where you can uh, sneak them in on the quad. Uh, we left a bit of space also for the 40 LEDs on the side of the roll cage. But um, mentioning these LEDs, these are the tiniest LEDs I've been using. They've been working really well. I had them on the Helix 2, but these small ones work perfectly with the JS1. We're actually working on a new set of LEDs with them that has connectors. So for things like the Shenzhen race and other races like the F FAI ones where you need 40 LEDs, uh, they'll be really, really useful for a quick setup. And they just have a neat little uh, board that you can put right up here. And then you can plug all your LEDs straight into the one spot. Front side, right now I've got my capacitor sitting here. So if you're using a T-motor capacitor uh, that'll fit inside the roll cage, we provide a little 3D printed cap that you can put over the capacitor so it doesn't shorten the carbon. And then running it inside, it means it's more protected. And then it also means you've got better error. I've been really liking having this sort of out of the way of the props and everything. It's just nice having it tucked away where you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. And it's just been a really convenient spot to have it. Obviously, if you've got a capacitor that's too big or you don't want to run it up the front here, you can always run it out the side like everyone else does. It's just really personal preference. All in all, the serviceability has worked out really, really well for me. Um, obviously, I did design this so I know how it pulls apart, but I have been able to swap parts incredibly quick when I needed to, uh, if I needed to test something new. It's just been really, really nice to work on, having everything sort of laid out and having proper wiring channels located for different parts. One of the key things about this frame that I really thought about when designing was I wanted everything to have a home. Um, a lot of frames sort of have open versatility where you can sort of mount things wherever you want but you need different 3D printed parts to make everything work. The idea was with this that everything that you need is supplied with the kit to make it work and make it work perfectly. So when designing this, we have obviously pretty much limited you to the TBS video transmitter. There are other small video transmitters available, but the TBS one is already race legal in every single racing body out there. So I really do recommend you use the TBS Nano. It's just, it works flawlessly. Obviously it's just better performance too. So this is a performance frame. Uh, it's designed so you can take a hit and finish a race, but it is primarily built around achieving the ultimate performance for today's setups. Um, and future setups too, as you'll see with some of the uh, evolving stuff we've got coming up in the works. Other than that too, this is primarily built around a 20x20 20 20 stack, actually. I'm using a 30x30 30 30 in it, so this is actually it in its sort of worst unrefined form. Um, everything still has a home though, so it still fit, fits together just fine. But if you go 20x20, 20 20, there are some other benefits that can be unlocked with it. Um, but you'll see those in the future anyway. We will also be making future videos on how to service this properly, just some of the sort of build tips and tricks that I've got. Um, just really sort of, they're little things, but they make the build come together so much nicer and make working with it a whole lot more enjoyable. So as far as availability goes, they'll be available through sites such as Impulse RC and Team Black Sheep. There are a bunch of other resellers too, we'll try to have them all linked down below, but just check with your local resellers. Uh, if they don't have them and they want to get these in stock, they can contact Impulse RC since they are the manufacturer and distributor of the frame. Other than that, that's my race frame. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this video. What we'll do now is we'll roll to some footage from the multi-GP IO of this thing in action. We will have a full edit coming soon. We've just been really, really busy with getting the uh, production of this stuff going, but that'll all be soon. So I hope you enjoyed. Happy flying and see you soon. All right, once again, let's keep it chill in the flight line. This is our house. Actually, it's the house of our grade eights. Top three to the final four, the grand final. Let's go green, pilots arm your quads. Live on the tone in lesson five. Off and away they go, clean starters. They all through gate number three already. 
Whole shot went to BMS Thomas, Amari, Bull, and Bilster, but we know that changes before they get back to the line. All eight pilots still in the air. Let's go up. BMS Thomas just passed Bull FPV, and Bull FPV hanging a little high, and it looked like Bilster jumped through that dive gate as well. Let's bring him around one time. Look at these LEDs. How awesome is this on a Saturday night? BMS Thomas, Bilster, Bull FPV, Volano, FPV, CH, one, two, three, four, five, then adapt. And here comes Amari, and here comes Ethan FPV trying to find the start finish gate. Now everyone working on lap number two again. BMS Thomas was your leader. Now it's a line to the dive gate. He goes from second back up in the lead by what I'm seeing with another lap to go and they come through. Our hobby wing start finish gate over here. A hot race under the bright lights. BMS Thomas, Bilster, one and two. Bull FPV in the number three spot. Remember, th you want to be third or better to move on to the grand final. FPV CH is in fourth, Villano in fifth. This is the final lap, white flag flying when they go through the Hobby Wing start finish gate. There's that wide line on BMS Thomas, but I don't see any LEDs in front of him. He is gonna go into that grand final to defend that 2017 championship. Joining him is one of the top qualifiers, Bilster as well in the grand final. Oh! BCH gets in as well.